In this video, we're going to create a procedurally generated endless runner map. We're going to make several handmade parts and connect them all together to infinity. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. So this is what we want to create. We have our endless runner that starts stopped. So I hit space and he starts running and constantly running to the right. And here, as you can see, we have an infinite randomly generated level. The level is made of handmade parts. So each of these is one section that was individually created like this drop right here. And we simply stitch them together. And as the player gets closer to the end, more get generated and so on and so on. So this goes on forever. All right, so this is our goal. Let's get to it. So here is my starting scene. I just have the player sitting around. And when I press space, he's going to start running. So press. There you go. He starts running to the right. I can jump. I can catch coins. And if I touch the spikes, I die. And it allows me to reset. So you can see that the scene has physics using gravity and automatic runner player movement. I've done a video on a simple character jump, so check out the link in the description to see how the simple jump works. Okay, so now let's think of how we're going to take this in order to create an infinite procedurally generated map. In order to be infinite, that means we need to constantly be creating it through code. So here I have my starting platforms, and then I need to add something over here at the end. So then the question becomes, what do we create in order to add at the end there? And the answer is manually built level parts. So we construct a couple of different prefabs that make up level sections, and then we randomly pick one and spawn it right at the end of the current map. Okay, so let's get to it. Here is the editor scene. As you can see, I have the player and then a level start. This contains all of the main level. As you can see, a simple prefab for the coins, another one for the spikes, and our platforms. So let's start off by making a first part. So down here, make a new empty game object, and we're going to name this the level part one. Now inside, we're going to add another platform. This platform, as you can see, it's very simple, just a sprite render with a box collider, and the layers, it's on the platforms layer. Now the origin for this game object, this is going to be the place where the last platform ended. So essentially the origin for our level part one will be placed right here. So drag it in there. And now we can locate our inner platform and let's put it to make a small gap. Okay, that should do it. So this is the origin and this is where we place our platform. So this should do it to make a nice simple test. So again, we're going to be instantiating prefabs. So let's make this into a prefab. And now let's make a script in order to generate it. So we go in here, make a new C sharp script. This will be the level generator. Let's make a game object that will run this script. So in here, an empty game object for the level generator. And we drag our script. OK. Now in here, let's make a private void awake. And we're going to spawn our level part. So in order to do that, we need a reference to it. So add a serialized field for a private transform for the level part one. Here in the editor, let's drag our prefab reference. OK. And then we just instantiate. So instantiate the level part one. Then we need a position. So let's manually see where it should be. And we're going to place it in there. So on 134 and 9. OK, so that should do it. So we should be able to see our level part one being instantiated right at that point. So let's remove the prefab from our scene. And now let's test and see if that part indeed gets spawned right in here. So let's see. Here we are, start running, run to the right, and yep, there you go. This is the end of the starting platform, and there's the new one. Okay, great. Now let's put this spawn in a separate function. So in here we'll make a private void spawn level part, and we're going to receive a vector 3 for the spawn position. So in here we're going to do pretty much this, and we use the spawn position as the spawn position. So here for testing, let's spawn our first level part on the same position. And then let's also spawn another one to the side. So let's put it 70 to the right. And another one, 70 plus 70. Okay. So we should be able to see three level parts being spawned. Let's see. 
Okay, here we are on the start, start running, there's, okay, yep, there's our first part, and right there our second, and right there our third, and the map ends. Okay, great. So we can now successfully spawn as many parts as we need. However, all of our spawn positions are currently hard-coded into our code. That's obviously not good, not very stable. So let's see how we can make these spawn positions based on the editor instead of being numbers in code. So here on the 11 part start, we can add an empty game object inside it. And let's call this the end position. This will serve as our end position from where this level part ends and where the next one should begin. So let's place it right at the end of the last platform. So here we have the end position and let's put it right in there. In order to make it visible in the editor, let's simply add a background and make to the gizmos. And yep, there you go, there's our nice end position. So this will be the place where the next level part will be spawned. So let's do the same thing for our custom level part. Here we are. Then here, let's also add a end position. Make sure that it's named end position and put it right there at the end of that. Okay. Since we're dealing with prefabs, don't forget to come here and apply all our changes. Okay, so this should be working. Now in order to see what we can do with this, instead of placing it right there horizontally, let's move these two up a bit. So essentially, right here is the origin of this level part, and then it ends in there. So it ends higher than it begins. So essentially, with every single level part being spawned slightly higher, we will have an infinite climb. So this is our editor setup. Again, make sure to update the prefab. And now let's go back to the code. And in here, let's first add a reference for our starting level part. So a serialized field for the private transform for the level part start. Here in the editor, let's drag our reference. Here's our level generator, drag the level part, okay. And on a wait before we start generating our level, let's first grab the end position from the starting level part. So we go to the level part start and find the end position. So this is what we want to use in order to spawn the next level part. So we use this inside here. And then on this spawn level part, we also need to return the transform so we can know how to locate the next one. So in here, we return a transform. And here we grab a transform from the last level part transform. We set it as what we get from there. And then from this one, we use that as the end position. So we find the end position. And we spawn a bunch of them. Okay, so we should be correctly spawning every level part one instance at the end of the previous one. So since we put it higher, we should see a nice climb with a bunch of level parts. So let's see. Okay, here we are. Let's start running and start running. This is, and there's the end of the start and there starts the new one and the new one slightly higher and another one slightly higher and so on. Okay, great. So we can now correctly spawn our level parts and manually define where they will. So now that we have endpoints placed on our level parts, let's work on making it infinite. What that means is essentially every time the player gets closer to the end, we spawn some more and keep spawning, spawning, spawning. So let's go back into our code. And the first thing we can do is simplify our spawn level part code. So let's make a simple function that takes no parameters and automatically calculates the spawn position. So a private void spawn level part. All we need is to store up here a private vector 3 for the last end position. And in here, we spawn a level part on the last end position. So this will return a transform reference for the last level part transform. And then we set the last end position to be on this one and we find it. So this one automatically spawns a level part and locates it correctly. So in here, all we need is to set the last end position to the starting end position. So the start dot end position. And then instead of all this code, all we need is to spawn the level part. Okay, let's make sure if it's working. So here we are, grab a bunch of coins, jump over this, and yep, there's that one and there's that one. Okay, so we now have a very nice simple function. Now we want the level to be constantly spawned as the player moves along. 
So since we are spawning level parts, we can simply define a value for the minimum distance of the player to the very last level part. So for that, let's make a constant, so a private const float for the player distance spawn level part. And here we just put a certain amount. So if the player is within this many units of the last level part, then let's spawn some more. So to test our distance, let's make a private void update. And on the update, we need to test the distance between the player and the last position. So that means we need a reference for the player. So again, another serialized field for the private player reference. Here we drag our reference, okay. And now in here, if the vector3.distance between the player.getPosition and the last end position, if that distance is under the player distance spawn level part, then we want to spawn another level part. So very simple. So as the player gets closer to the end, he spawns another one. Now in awake, let's just preload a bunch of parts. So we define an int for the starting spawn level parts. And let's say we spawn five. We do a simple four. Okay, that should do it. So just like this, our level should now be infinite. As the player moves towards the last end position, he's going to spawn more, more, more. So let's start. Okay, here we are with the game view and the scene view side by side. As you can see, we have the starting level part. Then we have a bunch of them being spawned as you go all the way up in there. So as we get closer to this one, we should be able to see more being spawned. So let's start playing. There goes the player. And he keeps going and going. And as he gets closer to the last one, yep, there you go, another one to spawn. He gets closed and another one to spawn and close and another one. So just like this, we have created a infinite level and an infinite climb and we can do this forever. All right, great, exactly as intended. So the functionality is fully working, but obviously it's extremely dull if all we have is just one level part. However, since we set things up in order to use prefabs, it's extremely simple to manually create a bunch of interesting ones and then we randomly pick from them. So let's make a bunch more level parts. So all we need is to make a new game object, the level part two. For testing, let's try placing it right there at the end. And now we add another platform. And the only requirement for each level part is that each of them has its own end position. So now I can, for example, say that this one will have a slight drop. And then I can also place the coins. So I drag the coin prefab. So place a coin there, another one there, another one up there. And yep, just like that. And if I want, I can also place some spikes. Okay, so again, as you can see, it's very easy to manually create a level part. And again, the only thing that we need to be careful is in adding the end position. So make sure it's at the end of this platform. So the next one knows exactly where it should connect. Then all we need is to make this a prefab, so just drag it in there. There you go, this is now our prefab. So now that we have our two prefabs, let's see how we can randomly choose one. So here on the level generator, let's go up here. And here we have a reference for the part one. Now we also need a reference for the part two. So instead of adding individual ones, let's rename this to the level part list. And here we receive a list of transforms. So here in the editor, as you can see, we got our level part list. Let's put two and we drag level part one and level part two. There it is like that. Okay. Now back in the code, let's go down to the spawn level part. Here we have a function that is automatically and takes care of everything. And then we have this one. So for this one, let's also receive a transform for the level part. And that's the one that he's going to instantiate. Okay. And then this function will take care of choosing a random one. So in order to do a transform for the chosen level part, we go into the level part list and we pick one, we grab a random dot range, starting at zero, going into the level part list dot count, and just like that. So here we are grabbing a random level part and that's the one that we pass in to spawn. Okay, so that should do it. Let's test. Okay, so here we are. Let's see if our both of our level parts are being randomly spawned. So we start running and here we go at the end of the start. And yep, there's the second one being spawned right away. 
So I can jump, I can grab these coins, and yep, just like that. And there's the number one there. That small jump was the number one. And again, we got another one falling down, and that one is up. So that's the first part, another first part, and another second, and so on. So as you can see, we are now correctly randomly picking between two different parts. Okay, so everything is pretty much working. Now all that's left is to create a bunch of level parts that we will randomly spawn. So let's do that. So here I have created a bunch of different level parts. All we need to make this work is just to go into the level generator and add them all to the list. So in here, drag all six parts, drag them onto the list, and that's pretty much it. So let's test and see if all of our random parts are being used. Okay, here we are, start running on the starting level part, and yep, there's another one, and right there, jump over that one, and there's a different one right there. And there's another one right there, and yep, there it is. All right, so this is pretty great. So just like that, you can see that our level is infinite and made up of handmade level parts. The level parts have coins and spikes, and it's up to you to add more things onto it. You could add more objects to interact with, like for example, moving enemies or moving platforms. And if you wanted, you could make different level parts per different level. So you would have some level parts for an easy level and some for a hard level. All you would need to do would be to change the level parts that you use. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials. Post any questions you have in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Alright, see you next time.